So hello everybody, I'm uh, Peter Bartwell. I'm not really, haven't really been involved much with 5G up until quite recently. So my, my background is on, on uh, live live IP in particular for, for our, uh, facilities. So almost everything I'm going to be talking about is not a fi uh, 5G, but it's good to get an, an idea of what's happening more generally in the, in the broadcast facility landscape i'll just uh, are you see so are you seeing the correct thing you should be seeing um you should be seeing a slide with a landscape on we see your first slide yes peter be good i think i think it should be it should be running that's, that's good okay so um over the last five or so years uh, a lot of broadcasts have been building building new ip based facilities so they've got ip in their core so we can see um bbc has done one in cardiff uh, cbc in montreal srf in zurich uh, we can take a look inside the we can take a look inside the cbc one uh, so the, sorry, the bbc one in cardiff uh you will see this is this this sort of thing here so large large um switches these are from the from Cisco, uh, here you have uh, basically media gateways or, or nodes, as they're called, uh, converting from legacy formats SDI into into IP. And as you see, a whole host of different different uh, systems from different manufacturers. So system integration is you know, quite a major quite a major thing uh, at the moment in the in the. Um, the wider broadcast industry and also sort of training for this new future so we've gone from this nice easy uh a, a world where everything worked with an sdi cable um for those of you who aren't may not be through with sdi it's a sort of a it's a, a sort of niche it's a broadcast specific uh video connection um now we're moving to a big software stack of ip um protocols and um fibers and and switches and things like that so this this sort of brings us to uh so it's raising quite a lot of um technical challenges for the industry in terms of how how do things that were sort of quite comfortable to do in the past what do we do in the future so there's 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 11 of them um so there's quite there's been quite a lot of of uh industry groups working on on this and i'll be mentioning quite a few of these as we go on um there have also been quite a lot of models uh, for how to how to represent this uh, one that we we uh, we like um we've mentioned the 5g records project um we we're, we're looking at the the amwa network media systems template and uh, full disclosure i'm i'm um, a chair of one of the two of the amwa uh, groups as well but it's it, it basically provides a a, a nice sort of uh, layered context uh, diagram for architecture which you then build up with the functionalities that will be um required uh, that will be, will be required in any any real uh ip based production system so we haven't got time to go into detail of all that but what i will do is go through um some uh, some of some of the areas of that are important here and uh, look at the relevant um protocol standards and and non-standard approaches that's uh, that are that are being adopted so firstly on transport um now with the streaming protocols now you have a choice here depending on whether you are basically streaming complete finished program material or all the production elements and i think what we're talking about here really is the is the production element so video audio and data kept separately stream separately rooted individually so so you own you you don't end up sending an entire video just to get get uh, an audio from the NCLE packets Typically, this happens uh, using multicast, and and the specs that um, important here is uh, SMPT ST twenty one ten SMPTE uh, Society of Motion Picture Television Engineers. That's the main that's the main player in in this uh, industry. Uh, that gives you an idea. So you 
so with ST2110, um, the video gets sent as, as an RTP stream, RTP multicast stream, the audio, uh, the ancillary data, they get sent separately. Um, whereas with a multiplex approach, you're, uh, this one here is, is sending the blanking along with everything else, it basically takes the SDI payload, uh, sends it down, down a cable. So this, you know, this is, this is sort of really, this sort of thing is where we want to be. Um, but of course it also needs to be synchronized. So, uh, we have the question of, of how to, how to manage synchronization timing. This, this was traditionally been done with, um, black and burst or trilog syncs and time code. Uh, I th NTP uh, was decided not doesn't provide the level of performance, so the industry has gone with PTP um, for these high end facilities. Uh, SMPC have uh, the twenty fifty nine suite of of uh, specifications uh, are relevant here, so they define things such as the where the frame starts in terms of PTP time. And there's also there's also a profile for that uh, simply use that, that covers things like um, start startup uh, and recovery time and things like that. Uh, there are also there are also um, specs to do with the streaming stream side of things. Of, and of particular interest is this one here, twenty one, which basically is to do with packet timing on on the network. And it and it and it's it does you know place constraints on on senders um that can be see could be seen as problematic longer term um because they're not really they were never really designed to be um working with virtualization in mind however the industry you know, is is sort of looking addressing that area now of course you may well want to uh move um have streams that uh, are that need to, to have compression, low latency. Um, th th there's a set of, you know, there's mezzanine compression approaches available. Uh, this one here, JPEG, assuming you can see my mouse, JPEG XS is probably the one that's getting the most attention at the moment in the industry. Um, that, that does have some licensing ish, um, complications, uh, which I think the industry is trying to sort out. There are other other possibilities uh, as well. VC2 is one that BBC uh, did that is a royalty and patent free approach. Uh, there's a promising one, H high throughput JPEG 2000, which is, um, we may hear more of in the future. Uh, for these ones, you can, you, you can, you can simply also sort of uh, have specifications for how to, how to use those in a, a 2110 framework. So the idea here is that 2110 does actually pr provide an ecosystem that lets you stream uh, different types of different types of um, content. Um, meanwhile, we've also got, uh, uh, I think NDI may have been mentioned earlier. Uh, New Tech NDI is a, a popular Sort of mid, maybe it's like a two tier two approach for for lighter weight productions. It's it's proprietary, um, but it's open. You know, it's free to use, and it's from uh, New Tech, uh, now owned by Vizarty, and that's used by a lot of um, for a lot of uh, less high end applications. And then of course, um, there's the whole area of you know what what do we do when we want to go to higher higher rates higher levels of compression and um i think that's sort of out of the scope of what i'm going to talk about today uh another interesting development recently is ipmx which is uh, uh using st2110 and adapting it for applications um for the pro av market that's a huge market um to you know, video conferencing digital signage and things like that that's quite that's quite interesting. That uses JPEG excess compression. Um, it recognizes the complexity of uh, the overhead by putting in um, boundary clocks and using high high end PTP requirements. So they're they're looking at simplifying that, and it carries some of the other information like content protection and display identifiers. It's important. 
there are other other uh, technologies in this space as well. So you've got um, HD based T and SDVOE. Um, they've come out. They've sort of grown from Ethernet rather than IP based. But you know, there's uh, there's a lot happening in in this world. And we mustn't forget the audio. So Dante is is well established um, as the most widely used uh, audio over IP approach. Um, it's worth saying that audio has been doing IP for a, uh, a long time in in uh, in uh, audio facilities. AES67 is a standards based approach, and it will interwork with Dante. It's also sort of you know, well placed to work with uh, 2110 if you follow the right recommendations. And going beyond, and, and once we start going outside of the facility, um, uh, so I, I guess people here will know a lot about the techniques of uh, FEC, um, ARQ, bonding, and so on. Uh, uh, we're seeing a lot of proprietary solutions uh, being used um, by broadcasters, but there are open ones coming along. Um, SRT is uh, developed by High Vision, but the implementation has been open sourced, and that's being used by a, a lot of a lot of. Um, um, it's used quite a lot by the streaming community and sort of low end, and it's finding a lot of new use within low end broadcast applications. Meanwhile. Um, in the standard space, the Video Services Forum of Developing RIST, also known as TRO6, which actually has, is a toolkit, uh, is, is, it will be capable of a lot of features, um, things like uh, support for bonding and things. So that, that, that is quite, that's interesting, that is growing um, and something to, to, we are looking at that uh, fairly um, closely at the moment. So um, moving on to the control plane, um, this is control. So e even though media plane has gone IP, uh, there's a lot of the control plane generally is still quite a way behind uh, with in terms of standardization. There's we see multiple proprietary systems, multiple, multiple protocols. Uh, some here are so this is um, BNCS, this is VSF, not VSF, VSM. Uh, this one is Cerebrum. And the, you know, these have been developed by, by companies um, just getting the work done. Um, so there's a lot of sort of glue of diff gluing together different, different approaches. There's a lot of expertise required there. And um, this is where NMOS, we, uh, as um, Torsten mentioned earlier, that um, ISO 4 uh, and ISO 5 come in. Um, these are developed by the um, Advanced Media Workflow Associations. There's, there's actually a suite of about um, 15 or 16 different um, specifications, but ISO 4 and ISO 5 are the most well-known ones. And they, they, they are look, you know, they, they're web-friendly set of specs that primarily have been used for with 2110 and IPMX up until now, but uh, they certainly don't have to be. Um, just, just yeah, briefly, if you got if you connect one to connect to any device to receiving device, they they will register the, these things. They're actually called nodes in um, and we'll speak. They will register themselves with the registry, and your controller application will use ISO five to set up the uh, connection between them. And the 5G Records project um, is actually looking at how you know how that can be extended um, beyond beyond. Um, I mean, generally in that case, there they will be running within a 2110 network. But in 5G Records, we're looking at this 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 case here. This is this is oversimplified. It's not really not quite like this, but you get the idea. And it's also worth mentioning uh, work that's happening in the video services forum uh, that is related, which is to do with joining two, two um, facilities or campuses here together over a WAN. And so you're streaming, streaming, um, streaming video, probably uh, again, JPEG access seems to be uh, what people are talking about here and, uh, and exposing information from the two registries as required for the purposes of the production. So that's really interesting work that is quite active at the moment. 
And then as we look uh, into controlling the, the the media devices on the network themselves, um, there's lots lots of lots of um, proprietary protocols out there. Um, there's no generally adopted way forward on this. Um, one that is quite popular is Ember Plus, which I know did that by a company called Lavo and uh, adopted, supported by quite a lot of manufacturers in the in the uh, the broadcast video domain. Uh, within a, some some of the um, audio industry uh, OCA, which has been um, standardised by AES, that was developed by Bosch, is um, um, quite popular uh we also there's also lots of control protocols to do with um controlling cameras um there's three three of them uh visca on vif uh ptz i haven't got time to talk too much about them and there's lots lots more some of them still you know a lot of them even use serial ports and things like that so uh, again the the this is an area that 5g records projects is looking at trying to um do something in, in and i will say that amwa is also uh, does AMWA have work in this area, even though it's not yet part of NMOS? Um, meanwhile, um, what about actually the, the the network itself? Uh, how do you ensure that your your streams will get between the two devices um, and not not uh, suffer from congestion? Well, one way is to design it in a way that is um, over provisioned or or correctly architected. Um, you may well have to use some some um, flow, some uh, sort of a, a control what is emitted onto the network. And there are, in practice, the the, you know, the big vendors, Cisco, Arista, and so on. They provide they provide um, protocols. Uh, there are number there are a number of protocols for which, un, which is sort of unsoft defined networking umbrella that are useful here. Um, and we did actually try and come up with a common API for this, but there wasn't sufficient take up and um, that hasn't really happened. And within 5G records, uh, we're looking at what can be done with, with 5G's um, APIs here. So the network exposure, policy control functions and similar. Uh, security also important. So. Um, in the past, we could just assume that you could just lock your your apparatus rooms. You could rely on the fact that SDI doesn't suffer from viruses. If you did have any, if you do did have any um, IP there, you make sure it was air gapped. You not connected to the internet. That sort of thing, for all sorts of reasons, um, is not enough now. Uh, a quick plug for work in the EBU in the cybersecurity here. Um, there's some good recommendations around this it's worth mentioning that um st2110 that the because it's you know they're very high bandwidths uh you know, it's uncompressed uncompressed uh, hd or uhd content um doesn't isn't uh, encrypted at least people aren't using it in an encrypted way so it's very important to secure the control plane nmos has got a set of specs uh for doing that um, I wouldn't say they're very widely adopted yet. Uh, similarly, SRT and RISC provide uh, encryption and authorization support. Uh, what we see here is, you know, we, we really need we really need uh, broadcasters uh, users to start um, asking for it uh, rather than saying, well, well, we'll we'll put that on the spec when it's available. So, um, you know, there's a chicken and egg thing really. Uh, just going back to that template again, just this this sort of uh, we haven't got time to go through it now, but um, it'll be in the, in the uh, published slide, so you can see you'll be able to see where where the, some of these items of work sort of fit in to, to our world. And there's a number of um, facilities that sort of uh, uh, making life a little bit easier. Uh, this one here is worth mentioning. The, there's a thing called TR one thousand and one, which is a set of it's basically a technical recommendation that says. Um, if you're going to use 2110, uh, then use it like this and then use these parts of NMOS and make sure that you have things like DHCP and DNS running and so on. And there's, yeah, there's various tools, implementation guides and so on. Uh, there's some testing. Uh, there's a testing program, which has rather been, um, hasn't, the, the pandemic hasn't helped here. It's moved to a, a remote approach. 
Um, there are all sorts of communities on the group. Um, Ames here is 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 the the um, community that is promoting twenty one ten. The vendor community is promoting twenty one ten and um, and then Moss. Uh, and longer term, um, I need to end soon. But uh, we, as we move, I guess away from towards more lighter weight productions, we're seeing seeing um, cloud being used more. We're seeing we're seeing lightweight tools like vMix being used in production. Uh, this thing here is a is a um, touchscreen based control room that uh, RTBF in Brussels have done. And uh, this is now being reflected in the offerings of the, the big players. So Grass Valley have a thing called the Agile Media Processing Platform, for instance, that uh, you know, basically has a cloud backend. And as far as the cloud goes, we, we are starting to see clouds become more media friendly. So as an example, AWS now includes a thing called the Cloud Digital Interface, which provides a high throughput, low latency interface between compute instances. So this is a sign of things to come. And EBU is looking at um, requirements, proof of concepts here. The Video Services Forum has got an um, interesting project looking at possible recommendations for use of clouds within professional workflows. And then all, one of the reasons to do all this is to get achieve better automation. So uh, there's work happening um, in the in the EBU, um, uh, uh, looking at uh, the how we might make better use of um, automation technologies, continuous integration, DevOps from the wider industry. So, um, I can provide more information on all these things if you like. So that's it. Sorry, I'm a couple of minutes over, um, but there's a lot going on, and I haven't really even mentioned 5G yet. So hopefully, hopefully that was that was all right. Hopefully that was relevant for a bit of context. Thanks a lot.